Next up is Cha Wa Ye, who's a fashion media veteran and the former chief editor of Modern Weekly. During her years at Modern Weekly, the publication became a progressive proposition among Chinese fashion publications, taking the form of an avant-garde highbrow magazine with a weekly circulation of over 900,000 readers across the country. Previous to this, she was involved in GQ Taiwan as fashion director and the launch of Vogue China. Three years ago, she left Modern Weekly to become group style editorial director at Modern Weekly's parent company, Modern Media, to become co-creative director for the fashion film platform Nowness, and to found Ye Ye Ye, an independent consultancy focused on fashion and sustainability. Welcome, Xiaowei. It's great to have you with us from Shanghai. You've risen to become one of China's most prolific figures in fashion publishing, and I'm interested in the beginning. What made you want to enter the the field of fashion media in the first place, and what was your your first job in publishing? Well, I think it was kind of accident because I didn't really never meant it went into fashion publishing. Uh, that was when I was in New York, and I was actually studying performance studies at NYU. That was in the early nineties, and when I graduated, I was. Uh, interning or working at this uh, experimental art space called Exit Art and then doing performance because uh, given it's experimental art space, they also have a performance space. And then I remember there was an interesting group show called Let the Artists Live. So there's 20 some artists who will live in the gallery space, which is in downtown New York for one month and each just carry on our project. So I met this conceptual artist and he is from Nigeria, and his project is called Cover Girl, which is like putting his face all over magazine covers. In a way, um, in the nineties, well, I think that was the time people are questioning cultural identities and representation. So, so in a way, it's obvious this question about the present, the representation of minority people on the fashion magazine. So since I'm Chinese, it's Nigerian, so we start talking about like a lack of representation of us in the mass media. So then, so then it naturally evolved, become an art project to an independent publisher. So we become partners and we will do independent publishing called A Root. And it's actually much more a cultural publication, not focused on fashion. But you know, like at that time, I think that's the time when all the independent publishing was kind of really happening. And then the majority of the income still come from advertisers and most of the advertisers are from the luxury industry. So therefore you need to have certain kind of fashion contents, but still it's much more in a wider spectrum of culture. And then, so that's gradually like I get into kind of has something to do with fashion but I never really want to be like a fashion editor or to be within a fashion industry. But then it just become more and more like the cultural type of publication has a lot to do with fashion industry. And then when Condé Nast um, was first launched uh, China, uh, Chinese editions of Vogue and GQ in Taiwan in the 1996, so they kind of recruit me to be the fashion editor. So that's probably my first real fashion editor job in 1996 uh, for uh, the Taiwanese version of a GQ magazine. And that doesn't last very long. Then I went to start working actually a very interesting TV station and producing fashion TV programs. And, and that's when I really realized I love, well, if you can call that publishing, it's, even though it's TV. So that's when the time I really love like kind of fashion publishing. So that's kind of the beginning. So what about back in the 90s? What was the, what was the landscape of fashion publishing like? Well, I think as I say, like, I think that was a time like uh, the independent publishing was really blooming. And also, I don't think they're particularly called fashion magazine. Of course, you you have the mainstream fashion magazine, i.e. Vogue, Bazaar, Elle. And I remember I rarely look at those magazines because we think we're independent. So it's more like cultural magazine. Of course, there's heavy fashion content. So I think in UK, you have uh, Days, ID, and in Europe, you have maybe... A, I'll mix something wrong about the timing, but I remember this old bunch of like, I don't know, like, mm, my memory is not like, 
Dutch magazines or purpose or all this kind of uh, self-service. And in New York, we have several other like a V or us, like, well, a route doesn't really survive too long. I think it kind of was there. It's not too successful, but it was just a time like everybody when you have something to say and you just publish something to show your own point of view. And so uh, I would say that's kind of the landscape. So it's kind of the booming of independent publishing. I think we're all the way into 2000s. And from your very extensive experience, how do you understand fashion media to have evolved over time until the more current? Well, that is really a very big question. I think fashion media evolved. I mean, like everybody knows right now, I think the whole media landscape changed dramatically towards to much more digitalized, social media wise. And the authority has no longer or rarely to be uh, concentrated on a few big titles or few big editors. And then it's more like kind of more democratized. And then also the way of presenting like a fashion information or, or media is, yeah, it's, I wouldn't say it's just print and digital. It's more like 360 degree. Like you can experience, experience the fashion content through print, through social media, through digital channels, through like a live experience, through like a store installations and special experience, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, yeah. So I think that's in one way, the big change. The, uh, the other way, I think maybe it's because my personal interest. So I think also the content of fashion media has been changing quite a lot. And of course, when I say it's personal, maybe it also has to do with one person's growing, but also has to do with the expansions and the change of the fashion industry itself. I think at the very beginning, people are more focused on designers or creative talents. I think, especially in the 90s or early 20s, I think the legend like McQueen's and all, or Magella, Hamela, all those people is kind of dominate all the fashion medias. Mm. So people think fashion is made up by a few genius who create all this kind of beautiful images and then and the style, this style. Then gradually, I think like, and, and gradually people understand actually behind all this genius, but I thought, I think it also has to do with the change of fashion industry itself. So uh, the independent houses gradually more and more be uh, convert into the big conglomerate. So people realize actually behind all this genius, what is more powerful is the business, the CEOs, the, the big companies, and then who are, who has the power to manipulate the market and to control the seasons. So therefore, at the same time, so I think fashion business title has become more and more popular. I think the rise of a business of fashion is one example. So people want to know the mechanism behind all these beautiful clothes and phenomena. And then, but I think now is the another change is coming. That's also why I kind of shift my interest into sustainability. I think so after people know that they want to know even more what's more behind. So they realize fashion is not just a beautiful clothes, beautiful image making, and not just a business assistant, not just like a, the the whole like a um, certain operational system. It's actually a value chain, a supply chain. It going back to the factories, the workers, the farmers, the, the 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 earth or the natural environment. So so hence the care for sustainability. So hence was I think people yeah. So I think that's um, through the shifting of the fashion system. I think the contents of fashion media or the focus of people who has been working in fashion media also changes too. And you held the position of Editor-in-Chief of Modern Weekly until 2017. Why did you decide to leave? Well, I think um, well, for kind of exactly the same reason I was talking about, for a few reasons, but one is uh, uh, I, was, I want to dedicate more of my time into sustainability. And then it kind of, and my interesting of sustainability, I think it started from 1915 or 16. And when I first uh, was attend Copenhagen Fashion Summit, and before that, I mean, of course, I know a little bit about that, but it never really touched and shocked me until I went to the summit. And it's the first time I realized 
like the huge social environmental environmental impact fashion industry has. And then for someone which I think I've been, as you say, I've been such a veteran in the fashion media and fashion system, I work in fashion for so long, and then I think I'm a very intelligent people. And how come I didn't know fashion has such a huge social and environmental impact? For me, like this is kind of, uh, unforgivable. So I feel like I need to do something to make this up. So I start doing more research. And also I'm still at the Modern Weekly. So I ask my editors to start a weekly columns, encouraging to dig out more about this. So the more I find out, the more I realize this is something I kind of really want to uh, make more efforts to. So uh, but doing communication or consumer education is one thing, but I also from my own point of view is to, to push this the industry or the companies uh, to make some change is even more important. So that's why I kind of decided I want to shift my role from media to basically like, well, consultant to helping companies to, to understand what is sustainability and what they can do and to help them to make whatever transformation they have to make. Mm. And what do, does your current position as group style editorial director entail? Because that's your new position at, at Modern Media Group. I always had that position because uh, it's kind of a loose position. And uh, basically, and, and now it doesn't really, I think, well, I don't involve with the daily operation of Modern Media or Modern Weekly because as I say, I kind of want to do something different than medias and also realize this new things I'm doing for me has more meaning and more urgency than medias. So that's why, but then I have a strong feelings of affinities and appreciation of modern media groups. So, and always we, we share like a lot of values and visions together. So that's why I still remember the title. So I don't know maybe more like a mascot or like inspirations, but I, I do uh, work on knowledge uh, less and less. But three years ago, when I decided I want to focus on sustainability, that's also the time Modern Media Group acquired knowledge. And for them, it's a very, it's a, it's a new attempt. And it's, I think it's probably should be the first time a Chinese media company to buy a foreign media titles. Usually is, is you know, all those continents and hers, whatever, come to China, but they're all China edition and to, to kind of translate their visions to the Chinese audience. So this is kind of the, kind of the first time it's kind of reverse. And also knowledge giving is very, is small, but it's a very wonderful, nice um, video, video media. So I, for me personally, I think it's much more interesting than just print. So, and also I know my boss very well. I know Jefferson quite well. So I think it would be good for me to, to help the kind of the acquisitions or working together and collaboration smoothly. And also at the very beginning, it, it, we need a lot of work to set it up. So that's why I was more involved to set up now this properly and to have a team and making the team running smoothly. And now the, the team is quite strong and healthy. So basically, they're just running on their own. So I'm not doing that much physically. And I'm as always um, advocating for the printed medium and paper publishing. But in talking about contemporary publishing, I think it's inevitable that we mention this predicted death of uh, print. Do you think there's an enduring appeal or meaning of materiality and of the printed, of the printed artifact right now? Well, I would never say print media is dead because I think well, it's always going to be there. It's probably not going to have the same kind of influence. I mean, they still have people like print, just like people still like book, but it's probably different type of people and the importance and the influences are different. So it's very hard for me to predict anything. And I, for one, is I'm not, like some people, I'm not sentimental about print media. For me, I'm more interested in the message in the media. So for me, different media is just different channels. So when I know how to use print, I use print. And then when I learn how to do digital, I use digital. And I'm also doing event and experiment, uh, ex experiential things. And so, so it's for me, it's all different channel to, to 
cultivate, to create, and to disseminate the message I want to do. So print or not print, I personally don't care that much, but I know people, I, I do know people who care about print a lot, who love print, who love the touch and materiality. But sure, sure, I'm sure there's always going to be people like that. And there are some very wonderful print editions which are it's always going to be there and to be appreciated, but it probably just not going to be as popular as when we were kids. Exactly. And after leaving Modern Weekly, you said that you were not going to come up with producing anything new, but you're going to help existing companies to make their practice more sustainable. And let's talk about the idea of sustainable publishing. Do you think it's possible to to publish in fashion without contributing to the production of anything new? Well, I think when I say I'm not going to come up with anything new, it's probably more focused on like a fashion industry. Although when I would say I'm going to dedicate more to sustainability, it doesn't limit to the fashion industry because I think that's what is interesting about, or that's why I'm so interested in sustainability. Like everything is part of a system. So it's not just fashion industry is fashion industry. Agriculture is agriculture, and, and and data science is data science. They should all be linked together. So when I say, but of course, because most of my background and, and connections or relationships are within fashion, still in the fashion industry. So the most more obvious project I did is still within fashion. So I guess the background when I say that is like because uh, I'm 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 not so into say oh we should launch a sustainable collections or doing a new store doing that whatever because I think one thing about sustainability is like uh, and especially in terms of fashion is there's there's too much out there so so how can we so so I'm kind of against to bring even more to this world but it's it's how to make the current practice more sustainable, how to replace the current material with more sustainable material, and then how to encourage people actually to consume less products, but still make the company can be sustainably growing. So I think there's a lot of interesting things I can try to think or encourage people to think together. But as to, is there a sustainable publishing? Honestly, I never really thought about it because um, like in our common sense, talking about sustainability has to do with producing the materials and waste of resources, right? So if going back, unfortunately to say that, but like I think the print media is dwindling. So we are selling less and less copies. And then, so in a way it will create less and less waste. So I, well, in a way it's probably becoming more sustainable and especially people not aware as long as, it's not really wasting too much resource as long as you're using recycled paper and using like a soil-based or bio-based ink. So, and then when you're done with the magazine, you kind of send it back to people who can recycle it. I don't think in terms of material, you are wasting too much resources. So that's why it's not really a serious or urgent issue. I wouldn't say it's not a, an issue because in every aspect of our life, I mean, we all need to reconsider about the principle of sustainability, but maybe in the media business or in terms of print, it's not so urgent as in the other industries. Um, how do you imagine print changing and what kind of magazine do you think it's worth cutting down trees for? Um, honestly, I have to say, I don't know, because as I explained to you before, I'm not really thinking about this for a while, because I mean, I'm, I'm not using print as my field of work or a media to express my thoughts anymore, less and less. So, so I'm not really thinking what kind of print is worse to be like live forever that's fine and um fashion publishing has been completely transformed during the past decade from printed media to the digital um, boom and the ways fashion is presented has changed from you know glossy print pages to digital articles to instagram to TikTok. 
And as co-creative director of Nowness, how do you maximize the digital experience as opposed to the more sort of tactile and tangible? What do you think an online platform can do that print cannot? Well, I think there are very different platforms. And I think the thing is, okay, it's very interesting. It's not like what this can do, the other cannot do. And then it's also because for me, I'm, I'm looking at this way. It's like, and also it's also, I like digital or filmmaking more than photography or print, but it's just like a print has been there for, say, for example, Vogue magazine has been there for 100 years, right? So print has been there for 100 years. So maybe at the very beginning it was illustration, but fashion photography has definitely been there for, what, 60, 70 years? So therefore you have so many masters, you can call them them, and then you have so many memorable fashion images out there. So naturally you say, oh, they are the much better way to present fashion. But then the thing about like uh, using digital to represent fashion or fashion image are created, I think maybe Nick Nye is really the pioneer and how long has been doing show studio? 20 years? And most people start, and now this is this year is the 10 years anniversary, right? So most people start doing, using moving images to represent fashion. It's only like 10-ish years. So there's still a lot to like, uh, potential to be explored. There's still future master we can expect. There's still a lot of memorable things we can remember, which we just don't know yet compared to the history of print. So I think that's why it's interesting and inspiring to working with movie image. And also when we talking about movie image with the te uh, development technology, that could have so much even more uh, new possibility coming out faster and faster. Like now most people are start exploring VR and AR and all this kind of virtual imaging with the real images and this and that. So so it's very hard to know where it's going to leading it to. So I think that's how I'm more interesting and more keen to working on like digital images or, or, or any kind of new possibilities. And it's not to saying they are going to be better than the other and how can they complement the other. It's just saying they have a lot more potential because everything is just kind of at the beginning. And I'm curious to know if you're planning any new ventures within fashion publishing now that you've sort of um, resigned your position and, and kind of left the field. Um, not really. <laughs> I'm actually really quite focused and also because on the my sustainability consultancy or communication or things related to that. Uh, not only because when I realized how urgent the issue is, and also because for me, it's also new. Like I'm just start getting interested in this field for five years and start doing it for three years. So I'm still a newcomer in this area. So I'm actually, yeah, would say most of my time and energy is focused on this area, trying to learn more, to do more, to know how to do more, to make some changes and this and that. So I am not too much focused on fashion industry or fashion medias anymore. So lastly, and more broadly, I want to ask you, um, what changes would you like to see in the fashion industry at large? Well, that's a very good question. I think I, I would actually just doing a talk for MoMA the other day. And then like, uh, there's a lot of questions, like uh, young people who want to learn fashion, they want to get advice, whatever. And then I couldn't hide myself. The first thing I come out with advice, like, please don't be a designer. Trying to be a farmer, trying to be a biologist, a pioneer, trying to be a data scientist, trying to be anything else. Just don't be just a designer. And that's exactly what's going on because I think that's maybe my problem with uh, about fashion industry and, and not so interesting fashion media so much because I think fashion industry is one of the, the most conservative industries I know. People usually looking at each other and looking inside and they're rarely looking outside and rarely working with people outside of the industry. And then of course now people are more open because they feel they have to, but for a long time, they call the exclusive, they call the I are those snobbish, this and that. So, but I think the time is changing. Like a uh, fashion industry is always going to be there because people love fashion, people need clothes. But then fashion designer cannot be just fashion designer. Fashion industry cannot be just within fashion. You need to work with people in different kind of field. 
in in science, in biology, in art, in all different kind of field. So I think that's why I would think what the fashion industry at large need to change is start serious and sincere collaboration with other industry. Well, Shawai, it's been um, really interesting to speak with you today. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. <laughs>